in cities like Pretoria and Joburg and Cape Town and, and Bloemfontein, they have huge landfill sites that are placed around the, the cities. Generally, they get about 100 to 1,000 tons of waste per day. If you took Soccer City, we'll fill it up about 15 times in a year. Now you look at every single municipality, um, they'll tell you the landfills are full. They, they have nowhere to take their waste. And obviously the environmental impact, I mean we're talking about groundwater pollution, air pollution, and you've got people that even scavenge of you know, these waste dumps. By far the, the biggest way we generate electricity is through burning coal. I'm not sure what the percentages are, but I think it's in the upper 80% that is coal-based. On, on the fuel side, I stand to be corrected, but I believe it's somewhere around a third of our fuel is produced from coal-based processes. At some time in the future, we might, might run out of coal or out of uh, liquid fuel or out of gas because it takes millions of years to generate those by natural processes. And, and if we continue using coal as a source of our, of our energy, all we're doing really is killing ourselves. The city generates approximately 1.6, 1.7 million tons of general waste. This is the house, the waste that comes, the normal waste that comes out of offices, out of factories, and especially out of households. The landfill airspace, especially in the city of Johannesburg, is running out, and we must now change that and uh, see how much of the waste we can divert away from the landfill sites, uh, so that we can save the landfill site, airspace, and also transportation costs of, of waste. The traditional way of dealing with waste was we collect it, transport it, and we dispose of it at a landfill site. And now we must change our ways and move into, let's call it, alternative technologies. Our vision is to solve a waste problem in South Africa and even then later up into Africa. The concept, I guess, grew out of you know, our vision, which is to bring energy to the people and to try and decentralize the supply of energy. And by energy, I mean both fuel and, and electricity supply. Beauty fuel is a solution for carbonaceous waste problems. It's a mobile plant that produces energy, uh, that is fuel and electricity. And, and this is produced from renewable sources. The thinking behind this was, we need to make processing plants small. Okay, and, and in making them small, the question arose within the group, how small can we make this? And, and then the thinking was, why don't we build something that we can actually take to the people? Something you can take to where the waste is. The idea behind the small size is to make it very, very versatile, so that almost anyone with a ton of waste can uh, have a container and can supply himself with electricity and fuel. As far as I know, a containerized unit that takes waste and, and produces fuel and electricity is a first. Waste has become a commodity. In other words, there is value in it and now we are putting processes in place to extract this value 
by doing so also create maybe very important jobs for especially young people and setting up a new industry in South Africa. You can have many benefits from the system. You can have a social benefit where you have a large job creation, where people can actually clean up the area where they live in and bring the waste to the system and get a, for instance, a prepaid electricity slip for him to have power that evening. You can also have a, a little bit uh, a higher educational job creation where guys can make a little company from the product that come out of the system and refine it further and sell it as a final product. And then even a higher skilled uh, guy can come in and do maintenance on the system and run the plant and do the business around that. Also for the electricity supply that you benefit the whole town and all the whole area in supplying electricity from a renewable source that is not a fossil fuel source. So what happens with all these waste, if you have heaps of that lying around, is we can introduce it into a gasifier. All your waste is transferred into this waste feeder and you have your municipal waste or plant material that you can have. From here, the waste is being transferred into the high temperature plasma reactor. In this reactor you have a plasma torch that supplies a very high temperature as the waste comes into the reactor, it is swirled around with very high turbulence and converted from a solid waste into a gaseous form. The main idea is to use the carbon content in all the waste types to um, uh, generate a syn gas. Uh, that's a, a very usable gas that you can make electricity or fuel from. The fuel that, gets, that we get out of the fissure drop system, we call it syn fuel. You need to go through the same refining steps to make the diesel that we can use. The advantage is it is the same diesel. We can use the diesel if you refine it correctly and if you do the correct certification to introduce it into your normal car. COP17 was a gathering of uh, the world nations. This gathering happens every year. So every year there's a gathering of these nations and, and the, the reason for the getting together is to look at solutions around uh, global warming and the green industry rather, let me put it that way. Um, and then the reason we went to COP17 was to exhibit what South Africa is doing towards uh, mitigation of, of CO2 emissions. The response was amazing, um, and since then we're still, today, still taking calls, you know, from people who saw this at COP17. Some heard about it from people who were at COP17, so it, it's been amazing. The unit itself, um, we spent money, our own money, <laughs> and Nexa, who we partnered up with uh, for their gasification technology, they also spent some of their money, um, and, and that's how we managed to put the unit together, which was quite a bit, but you know, obviously nowhere near what it will cost uh, to build the real thing. Well, funding is a big problem. <laughs> um, we are a state-owned company, and uh, Nexa's mandate is to do nuclear research. And uh, the work that we do on the non-nuclear work is not related to that. So we can't use that money to do it. COMPS is a small group and it's a small self-funding group, you know, within the university. 
and so we don't have the kind of money that's needed to to build the unit on our, on our own. You know, when you bring something new into the market, people want to see it work first. I think generally that's the feeling. You know, everyone that we talk to, they would love to see a working unit. Very few people are willing to take the risk um, in, in putting money into something that's, according to them, unproven. Studies have shown time and again how access to energy equates to the quality of life. If you've got to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, go collect wood, the quality of life is very different for someone who can just switch on a light. Every community can now produce its own power from the waste that they generate every day.